I'd like to call this special meeting of the Cherokee Village City Council in order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us have a moment of silent prayer, and as we do, I'd like to thank that we have lost two members of our city family, relatives, uh, the oldest brother of our chief of police passed today, as well as the brother-in-law of our colleague, uh, Chuck Christopher, and that's why he's not with us this evening. Amen. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Adams? Here. Hill? Ishmael? Here. Christopher? Roland? Here. Rupert? Smith? Here. Thompson? Here. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, who did you want to uh, acknowledge Mr. Rupert on your phone? Yeah. Tom, did you hear the roll call? Tom. It shows a connection. Tom. Somehow I got you shut off. <laughs> You're back on the air though. Are you good to go now? Yeah, do you want me to say something or well, I just, I'm just back in here? All right, we'll just respond to the roll call, President. <laughs> all right. Rupert? Yeah, I don't know whether he can hear you all the way over there or not, but he no. said okay. Folks, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to reconsider the settlement proposal. Now, some of you may be wondering why there was an additional meeting called. It's within the legal purview of anyone who voted in the majority. In this case, the nays were the majority to call for another meeting. And uh, one of the council members did so, and that's why we are meeting this evening. The first item that we need to deal with is we need to vote on whether we wish to reconsider this settlement proposal. So, I move that we uh, vote to reconsider this proposal. I need a second. I second that. Motion by Mr. Smith, <laughs> second by Mr. Ishmael to vote on reconsidering the proposal. Roll call vote, please. Adams? Yes. Ishmael? Yes. Roland? Yes. Rupert? Yes. Smith? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Now we'll move on to the new business of reconsidering the proposal. Do any of you up here wish to make any comments? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, last night I started my conversation with how disappointed I was with this entire process, and, um, and I still am. I, that, that's not going to change for me. But we're, we're in a situation now where, as a city, we've got to move forward. We've got to start thinking about where we're going to go from, from this point on. Uh, the other individuals who were scheduled in this lawsuit, they, they've already completed their task, and uh, they're, they're now out. So 
as a city, if, if we stay in a lawsuit, um, if we were to win, there would be nothing to win. Um, the, the way the other entities have settled, they're part of this suit. Um, they're, they're going to take greatly reduced incomes. And it's, it's going to be our responsibility in the next 120 days to look at what it is that we can accomplish for the city and how we can move on. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be extremely difficult with what we've got to face right now. But we can do this. Uh, we, we've gone through things in this city that we've gone through ice storms and we, we've gone through monumental things that, that most people would just throw up their hands and give up. I don't think that's the city that we're in. I, I, I hope it's not. One thing that I will say tonight is that we need this 120 days to refocus. Uh, that we can look at the options that we've got. We can pull in a stellar crew of uh, department heads and have them look at what we're facing and, and get their feedback on this. If we decide to go into this lawsuit the way it stands right now, there's a possibility that the, the limited amount of money that we will receive from SID over the next 120 days will be suspended. Um, if nothing else, it will be put into an escrow account to be determined whether or not it is owed to us at a later date. So that's going to slice off our other foot, basically, from where we're at. So, uh, to my fellow um, council members, I, I would urge you, please, it's not the best of all possible worlds, but uh, let's move forward with this. Let's, let's move forward as a city and, and, and bring in 2022 in a much better light. Uh, the way where we're at right now and, and what we would contemplate getting into this lawsuit will just drag us into the next year hoping for something that honestly can never be. Um, SID is, is for all intents and purposes, they're gone. One other thing I would say, and I'll land this squarely on me, I'm probably signing my political debt card right now, but as a council, this is our fault. Uh, and I apologize how hard it looked to every one of you. We've had years to look at other streams of income, other ways that we could bring in tax revenue into the city, and we did not. We sat here and we collected a handout from SID, and we didn't do anything else to sure up the city to make it anything else than, than what it was. So here we are, but I promise you, if you'll help us and we can move forward on this, I think you've got a city council's ear right now and I think we're ready to make a difference. That's all I have to say, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> oh, Mr. Thompson. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> I would first apologize at the length of my commentary last night. I, as along with Councilman Smith, <clears throat> was very disappointed in the position that we've been placed as a city. It is a very deep and narrow corner in which to try and navigate forward. Uh, we asked for reasonableness on the part of the plaintiffs, and we received very little in that. I spent most of the night last night going over the legal grounds of the plaintiffs. <clears throat> I came to the conclusion that as was echoed here last night, there is a very strong possibility that we would see SID, even in a reduced capacity, cease to exist. As a result, I must also encourage my fellow councilmen, I myself feel very differently, having spent a great deal of time going through the details of where we are. And unfortunately, Due to the way the negotiations have pro progressed, we had a fairly limited time frame to consider the documents and the final documents of what had been negotiated. I agree with Councilman Smith that we must pull together and endeavor to do everything possible to replace the significant revenues that will be lost. But if we allowed <clears throat> the lawsuit to continue, and I, I agree that there is a high probability that SID would have very serious repercussions and in fact likely not continue. As a result, the city would be faced with having to absorb those amenities and maintenance of those amenities in 
People focus on just the golf courses. It's not. We have seven dams, seven spillways, seven floodgates that assist this community in controlling <clears throat> some of the significant weather patterns that we have come through the community. Those have to be taken into consideration. So I think uh, as Councilman uh, Smith stated, we have to accept the situation we have, roll up our sleeves, it's not the first time we've done this. We endeavored about six and a half years ago to change significant, significantly the physical situation the city was in and we've made great progress. But we did so, and I, you have to acknowledge every single city employee, every department head, and certainly the administration, um, everyone worked together. And we have got to continue that effort to try and come up with reasonable, timely solutions to address the situation. Thank you. Mr. Ishmael. Uh, my main concern with it, so those that don't know me, my name is Eddie Ishmael. Um, I'm on city council. I own a real estate office here called Major Realty. And is your uh, mic on? Yeah. It's okay. And so my biggest concern with it is if we allow these amenities to uh, fall apart, I mean, there's a huge impact to property values for people, regardless if they're on the lake or the golf course or not on the golf course. So my opinion is yes, we. We need to look at voting yes and uh, doing everything we can to help property values as well as the other uh, streets and fire to move forward. So. Pam, do you have anything to add? Yes, I do. Can everyone hear me? Uh, you've got an affirmative nod from the audience. Okay. Um, there is no doubt that this is an impossible decision. Um, I have prayed about this, I have consulted experts about this, I have weighed back and forth, I have been on the fence, um, I have been involved with Cherokee Village in one way or another even before I got on council and anyone who knows me knows that at the end of the day, no matter what, uh, my heart belongs to the city and every single person that lives here. And this is a terrible position to be in. Last night I voted no, and I'll be very honest about why. I feel like the anger that is behind this, at least for me, and the sadness that goes with this, is, you know, if, if you're going to take from Cherokee Village, what is at stake? It's a matter of, instead of us handing it to them, make, make a judge take it from us. And that's where I was, and that's the honest truth. Um, last night, I did not sleep. And I have thought about this and gone back and forth. And I can honestly say that I'm, I'm still swaying back and forth. I just want to do what is best for every citizen of Cherokee Village. That's why we are voted to be on that council. That is who we are there to represent. And I feel like the biggest thing about, that makes me want to sway to vote yes, is the simple fact that if we do go into court, that is more tax money put there by the citizens of this village that we are spending that we don't have to spend. And to take a chance and to hope that the court was, you know, was lenient and saw it our way. Um, I, I recall last night that it was put to us, you know, it's a matter of going under water, but how deep do you want to go? And we have, as a council, this council, has always shown um, extreme restraint and responsibility in how we spend tax dollars. And I don't feel like this is the time to get away from that. So I think as impossible as this situation
citizens understand the care that we do put into our positions. And I, I do hope everyone understands how impossible of a decision this has been. And I do hope that there is a brighter Cherokee in the future. And I hope that um, we can all come together and, and solve these problems that are going to be placed before us. Mayor. Mr. Pam. Mr. Adams. Yeah, uh, I've been a member of the city council for ten and a half years. When I first got on, the city was pretty much in dire straits as far as financially. And uh, we had a lot of decisions to make to get out of that hole. And we did it. We moved forward. And it, we really progressed the past years since Mayor Stokes has been in there. He's done a great job along with the budget committee. And I agree with the rest of my council people that this is a tough decision to make. Uh, probably the toughest one since I've been on the city council. There's really no, there's no good decision. We, uh, we kind of got our backs up against the wall and our options are limited. So uh, to Mr. Kronkowski and the watchdog group, if you come across these folks, they are the ones that got us in this position. The majority of the people in the village didn't want this to happen. But they took it upon themselves to pursue this legal action, to put us where we're at. And it's going to affect everybody. Uh, it's, it's, changes are not going to be good. But we will, we will come out of it. We'll come up with ways to, to get the revenue to keep this city going. And uh, again, if you do come across any member of the Watchdog Group, <coughs> ask them if they're happy with where we're at right now in the village. Mr. Rupert, do you have any comments? Yes, if they can hear me. You can hear? They can. Go ahead. Um, everything Mr. Adams said I wrote on this index card, so I won't have to read it, but I would like to uh, I didn't steal make a was. motion to accept the settlement as, as read or the one we have from last night. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to vote on it. Okay, we have a motion to cast a vote. Do I hear a second? I second. Okay, motion from Mr. Rupert, second by Mr. Smith to vote on the uh, settlement. Before we do, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Um, one, Mr. Thompson alluded in his comments about the city having to take on responsibilities of the SID amenities. Um, that really would not happen because that property is owned and managed by SID. If they were in a position where they were without income and they have indebtedness, that property would have to be sold off. That would be the lakes, the golf courses, etc. cetera. And uh, so I don't have a crystal ball. You don't know what would happen with that. Uh, but that's, that's another situation that would not be good. I would also comment that we're, when we're talking about the future and Mr. Smith and Mr. Thompson and Mr. Adams and, every, and Mrs. Rowland all spoke about we're going, we're going to get out of this. We will get out of this. I've asked Mr. Smith to chair a task force to work on investigating other possible revenue sources and planning for us to uh, navigate our way through and into 2021. We have confident people on our staff that will be quite helpful in doing this. And we will also be involving some of you citizens as well. So with that being said, um, I would call for the vote. Roll call, please. Mayor? Yes. Uh, could you stress that the yay, the yay is for the... Oh, well, let me explain. Yes, thank you, Mr. Adams. A yay vote will be for approval of submitting this settlement. A nay vote will be for declining the settlement. Did you understand that, Pam? Uh, let me just repeat to make sure 
sure I'm clear. If we vote yes, we are voting to take the settlement. If we vote no, we are uh, denying the settlement, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. <clears throat> Adams? Yes. Ishmael? Yes. Roland? Ma'am. Rupert? Yes. Smith? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, with that being said, the uh, attorney representing us and myself will be at the courthouse at Ash Flat on Monday morning to submit this uh, settlement and then the judge will render a decision. I would not anticipate him rendering a decision on Monday. This case is scheduled for three days. So his first view of this will be Monday. And I would not expect anything from him until Wednesday. Uh, the, the courtroom... Uh, Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. Go ahead. I was going to say, no, we will just inform the court that it has been, uh, a settlement has been reached. Uh, there won't be any decision by the court on accepting or denying the settlement. It will just, the court will know and the, the judge will be driving up from Monticello to the hearing. So we will, so we, will, we, will we will not have yeah, to appear. Yeah, there will be a separate hearing, there will be a separate hearing to approve the settlement. Okay, well that. Be Okay, so we'll, I will not have to appear in court on Monday then. That's correct. Oh, thank you. Could you That's good news. Could you repeat what he said, Mayor? Yes, I did. He said there will be a separate hearing. Uh, he, the judge will be notified that we've approved the settlement, and there will be a separate hearing, which will be, could be a week or two weeks from now. With that, any of you guys have any questions? No, sir. I entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn. Motion, Mr. Smith, second to Mr. Thompson. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>